Hello and welcome to this lesson video where we will learn about the machine power that's required to overcome the typical resistances that a heavy construction equipment experiences during a whole trip. The video covers the shown three learning objectives. To select the appropriate equipment for a whole operation, the contractor needs to consider the shown uh, factors. The soil type and properties can affect the payload of the equipment and even limit the type of equipment that can uh, be used. The total hole quantity and payload or capacity of each equipment determine the number and type of equipment pieces needed in uh, a job to finish within the uh, desired duration. We will cover uh, in this lesson uh, the, uh, and the next lesson, the mechanical properties of uh, earthwork uh, handling equipment, uh, which can have a great impact on the productivity and cost. We can illustrate this point by sharing this question that is common in earthwork projects. Why does a machine only travel at 10 miles per hour when its top speed is 30 miles per hour? Uh, this question is important uh, as speed affects the individual cycle time of the equipment, which impacts the production rate achieved by the equipment, which lastly impacts the unit cost and total cost of the uh, holding operation. To answer this common uh, speed question, we'll need to learn about the following three equipment uh, power attributes. Uh, the required power, available power, and usable power. In this uh, video, we'll focus on the required uh, power. An earthwork equipment should have the power required to overcome the total resistance to its movement between the cut and fill uh, areas on the site. So, uh, in uh, calculating the total resistance, uh, it, it is uh, the same as finding the required power uh, value. Uh, just to clarify, the terms power and force are used here to refer to uh, the resistance forces. So, don't, don't tell your uh, physics teacher uh, we are mixing power with the force. To move forward, we'll consider the total resistance to be made of rolling resistance and grade resistance. From, from its name, rolling resistance is the resistance that uh, uh, is uh, experienced to roll uh, the equipment, wheel, or track. As you can see, uh, rolling resistance sources include uh, internal uh, gear mechanism to deliver the power from the engine to the wheel, uh, the flexing of the tire on the road surface and the penetration of the tire in the uh, soil. From its sources, you can conclude that the rolling resistance is majorly, majorly controlled by the whole uh, road uh, condition and the interaction between the equipment tires and the whole uh, route surface. To reduce the rolling resistance on the hard surface roads like asphalt, it's better to use uh, tires with narrow uh, tread and uh, high air pressure. On the other hand, uh, soft roads, like uh, natural uh, soil, will be better uh, matched with uh, broad tread uh, tires with low air pressure. We can see uh, this pattern in natural uh, history, where camels have been used for centuries to transport goods in des deserts, Camels' uh, feet are wide, so they can walk on sand more easily. Their huge feet help, uh, help them walk uh, on the sand without uh, sinking into it. Same applies to heavy equipment and loose uh, natural uh, soil. Using low-pressure tires increases the uh, tire flexing and distributes the load over wider tire-soil interaction area. The broad tread helps in locking into the soil, especially when it is loose or very muddy. For track equipment, there are uh, no wheels uh, to carry about uh, to worry about uh, their interactions with the soil. So the overall condition and shape of the whole uh, route surface is uh, the determining factor. Although track equipment is not that impacted by it. They are slow anyway. 
Now, uh, how can rolling resistance be estimated ahead of the project to be able to estimate the equipment speeds and production rates? There are three ways, which we will cover uh, briefly. First, uh, the rolling resistance of a whole surface can be experimentally estimated by using a towing uh, dynamometer uh, on a level of the road. The rolling resistance in this case equals to the tension in the cable attached to the dynamometer. The rolling resistance can be empirically estimated by using the shown table that was driven based on a previous uh, research field experiments. But this formula still depends on estimating or measuring the tire penetration, TP. Finally, uh, the rolling resistance can be estimated using the shown table, which considers the type of the whole surface and the type of the equipment and tire. The values are given as rolling resistance rate, like kilogram uh, of rolling resistance force per each metric ton of equipment weight, Remember, uh, the weight here is the gross weight of the equipment, meaning its own weight plus any load it carries. The rolling resistance values are also given in the US unit system. You can see that the rolling resistance for all equipment configuration, uh, configurations uh, increase with the decrease of the whole surface quality, from having a smooth, hard concrete to a very muddy, rutted soil. However, you can see that high pressure uh, rubber types, tires achieve the lowest rolling resistance on smooth uh, concrete. On the other hand, crawler equipment have the lowest rolling resistance in the muddy uh, soil surface. If crawlers are not available, then equipment uh, low pressure tires could be the second option. So we can conclude here that rolling resistance is very dependent on the quality of the whole uh, surface, which is a factor than, uh, uh, that, uh, factor that can be controlled ahead of starting the whole operation. Soils, uh, soils with uh, low bearing capacity may require using crawler uh, track mounted equipment, not wheel equipment. However, the quality of the uh, holding roads can be improved in two ways. Contractors can use water trucks and graders to level and smooth uh, the whole uh, route. Water trucks are also helpful in controlling the dust from the hauling operations. Also, geotextile sheets can be applied on the whole routes to increase their bearing capacity to reduce the rolling resistance for heavy equipment with large payloads. Now we're done with the rolling resistance, let's cover the grade resistance. Grade resistance refers to the gravitational force in the equipment when moving on a sloped road. The equipment resists this gravitational force when moving uphill and benefits from it in accelerating when moving downhill. Let's now derive uh, a general formula for the grade resistance force using some basic principles of statics and equilibrium. The grade resistance, GR force, equals the uh, component of F um, of the equipment weight parallel to the slope. Sloped uh, surfaces uh, are usually described by their grade percentile value, G uh, percentage. A positive G percentage is used when the equipment travel upward or uphill on the slope. From the geometry of the shown free body diagram, F equals W times uh, sine alpha, where alpha is the angle between the vertical equipment weight and the line perpendicular to the sloped surface. This angle is the same as the slope surface angle with the horizontal ground, which is tangent to, uh, 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 which its tangent uh, equals the vertical rise over the horizontal run, or the grade value G in decimals. Now we can assume that uh, most holding uh, routes have small angle um, of, of slopes,
At such small angle values, the tan and sine values of the angle are very close, so we can substitute the sine alpha in the F formula with tan alpha. And tan alpha is the same as G percentage over 100%. So we can end up with the great resistance force to equal the weight W times G percentage divided by 100. Here's a small example of 50,000 Newton uh, tractor going on a 2% grade. By applying the formula, we find that the grade resistance equals to 1,000 Newton. So far, we learned about the separate components of the total resistance or the required power. Now, let's see how to add them together. As we'll see in the next lesson about performance charts, it's common to represent the required power in equivalent grade percentage value. This means that we can keep uh, the whole uh, hauling route slope in its given grade percentage, but we will need to transform the rolling resistance expressed in kilogram per ton to an equivalent grade resistance. It's like transforming a leveled rough uh, surface uh, with a rolling resistance R, R, kilogram per ton, uh, into an equivalent smooth uh, sloped uh, surface with grade G, R, R. Let's illustrate this transformation using an example. We need to calculate the equivalent grade resistance of um, uh, the rolling resistance that is expressed by 20 ton truck on a loose sand with rolling resistance rate 150 kilogram per ton. Like we did uh, to drive the grade resistance formula, we will use the same approach to find the equivalent grade of the rolling resistance. And this left small uh, free body diagram. FARR is the uh, total rolling resistance force for uh, the truck we need uh, the truck when moving on the rough uh, horizontal surface. We want to transform this case to an equivalent resistance case where the truck is moving upward on a grade with grade uh, GRR percentage. F RR equals the weight, 150 ton, times the rolling resistance rate, 20 kilogram per ton. We set FRR equal to the horizontal component of the weight, which is shown in the right hand of the equation. So, we solve this equation to find that having a rolling resistance rate of 20 kilogram per ton is equivalent to driving uphill a 15% grade. So we can generalize a formula for calculating the equivalent rolling resistance grade percentage using the shown formula. So we don't have to set up and solve this equilibrium problem for every equipment in every project. If we are dealing with uh, uh, the U.S. units, a similar formula can be used for pound per ton rolling resistance that is as shown. Now we can add the physical grade resistance and the rolling resistance equivalent grade as two percentile values to get the total resistance value. Uh, but when we add the grade and rolling resistance values, we need to pay attention to uh, the sign depending on if the equipment is driving uphill or downhill the grade. The grade resistance will be positive driving uphill and becomes negative when driving down, uh, uh, downhill, which means it's not resistance anymore.
So in this video, uh, we covered the calculations for the uh, required power to overcome the total resistance forces, the equipment force faces on a project site. We will cover in the next video how to counter this required uh, power with uh, the available power from the equipment and check how much of uh, it is actually usable. That's it. Thanks for watching and take care.